Right. So um, we're going to start off. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself for those of you who haven't been to one of these webinars before. Um, my name is Catherine Salt, and I run a business called Marketing My, and I'm a social media um, consultant. If you want to find out a little bit more about me, you can visit uh, my Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash marketing my. Um, you can find me on Twitter, uh, for uh, twitter.com forward slash market my. And finally, there's my website, um, marketingmy.co.uk. So like I said today, we're going to be talking about engagement. Now, why is engagement so important? Um, engagement is how committed your fans are to your page. And more engaged audience means that your page is going to be commented on and liked. And therefore, it's going to spread around Facebook more. The more it spreads around Facebook, the more people that see it. Now, Facebook fan engagement has a direct effect, is directly affected by something called edge rank, which is how Facebook ranks, how interesting a post will be to individuals. Now, Facebook decides what posts from friends and pages that you're going to find most interesting by using this formula. Now, nobody knows exactly the whole um, impact of the formula. I think it's probably just a few in the Facebook great and the good who know all the intricate details on this. And, but what this means is if your posts don't get a high or a good edge rank score, they're not going to show up on your fans' news feeds. Now, as nearly 90% of your fans are never going to return to your fan page after clicking that magic little like button, it's vital that your posts show up in the news feed. Otherwise, you're going to be languishing in a little bubble um, that no one sees. So you're basically going to just be talking to yourself. Now, what this actual formula means to sort of the likes of you and me, um, going through it, we've got affinity score. Now, this is the relationship the fan has with a piece of content from a page. Weight, now this is based on the types of interaction the content gets. For example, sort of comments and likes. Now a comment is giving much more weight than a like, so you really want to encourage those. And then finally, time decay. This is how recently a piece of content was posted. I mean, one really important thing here, and this is like my little hot tip, is if you use a third-party application to post something to your fan page wall, it's not going to be weighted as highly as a piece of content you post directly. Now, what this actually means is, if you're using a program like Hootsuite to schedule posts, um, you have a direct link from your Twitter account to Facebook, or you use something like Network Blog to feed your blog automatically into your Facebook fan page, the content is a lot less likely to appear in your fans' news feeds. But I would say, if you do use Network Blogs, definitely continue to use it. Because it has such a positive impact on SEO, you don't want to lose that. But just make sure that when you're in there, you select the option so it doesn't show up on your wall, and then you can post it manually. So what I would say is now, we're going to go and have a little look at what Mari Smith uh, calls her principles of highly engaged fan pages. So the first one, fans need to feel valued, respected, and included. The easiest way to do this is acknowledge your fans, say thank you, um, respond to them when they make comments or post things, and if you use their first name in replies, that also makes them feel very positive. You can also, and we'll see an example of this later, identify your super fans. These are the people that constantly come to your page, they're always interacting, um, you know, and you can incentivize them by giving them special offers, 
giving them um, things that you know that are special to them. So the next thing is there is a cultural consistency. Consi uh, there's a cultural consistency across your page and brand. Now, your page, Facebook page, needs to be authentic and it needs to represent your business consistently with how you do business and how you talk to people in all your other marketing literature. There's no point having a complete disconnect because people will struggle when they're engaging with you if they don't feel that it's almost the same business. Um, then finally, you've got fans uh, come to depend on your page for a source of information and experience. Think about how you can help your fans rather than how they can help you. If your fans are loyal and engaged, they're going to advocate your brand and that will be the best advertising you ever get. And then finally, content. Content is regular, relevant, timed and fresh to give fans something to engage over. On my Facebook pages, I post once a day. Uh, Mari Smith posts two to th recommends two to three times a day. But I think it's dependent on your audience. And you can experiment and see if more frequent posts lead to people unliking your page or whether you actually get more engagement in it. Um, if you do post more than once a day, I would recommend spend spacing out for a couple of hours. Um, I might have a lot of friends. You know, some people have 500 fr 5,000 friends. And, you know, you can post up. And because they have so many friends, they they aren't barraged by your updates. However, you know, I think the average number of fans that a, a friends that a person has is about 125. You send out three posts all in a row, and that's just going to block up their wall, and that's really not going to work out very well for you. What I'd also say is make it easy for your fans to engage. Um, you can select in your edit page settings to allow um, fans to post and write on your wall, add photos, tag photos, and add videos. Now, some big businesses don't do this. However, I think if you don't allow people to write or post, your fan page is becoming a broadcast medium rather than somewhere where you can build a community and build engagement. Also as well, um, you'll see on that page it says expand the comments on stories. This means when you put a post in and somebody comments, it stays open. Now this is important because what it does, it shows that the page isn't just about you. It shows that you're interested in engaging and you want to talk to people. I mean, just as a side point, if you do have a business case page that is just broadcasting and selling, you're going to really struggle to get engaged fans. So what I would say are my top tips, and we're going to go through a few of these, is um, most of these tips come from research from a business called Buddy Media or uh, Virtue. And I will be popping links to the guys' reports in the follow-up email with the recording of this webinar. But if you post before noon, you're likely to get 65% more engagement. Now, if you have an international business, you just need to check where the majority of your customer base is and go for noon in that time zone, before noon in that time zone. I'd also test and learn on which days you get the most engagement. And you could do this by checking um, Facebook Insights. You know, there's a variety of contradicting um, studies on which is the best day. But it does appear that Friday does get a very positive um, rate of engagement. And I think, you know, I know on Friday afternoons when I worked in an office, there would be more tea drunk and there would be. Um, cakes and it, you know you just were more likely to be looking for something else to do um, also if you 
there's also research that shows that the longer the post, the less engagement you get. The ideal length of a post is only 80 characters. Now, that, that's tiny. That's less, you know, that's less than a, uh, than a tweet on Twitter. Um, also, posting outside business hours can increase engagement by 20%. But again, this is really going to depend on your fan base and the type of business you're in. If you're in a very corporate B2B business, then I, I'd say that this is unlikely to be the case for you guys. So we've got a great uh, uh, tip here that Mari Smith does. Now, what she does is on Facebook, she has little Friday parties. Uh, she, you can see she describes it there as a virtual networking party. Basically, she opens up her fan page so you can post um, your, your own fan pages on it, ask questions, links, and so forth. And it really is giving fans the opportunity to shout out about themselves. Another one is, and I really like this, this is a great tip. Um, the thing is, when you're using Facebook, you, like all marketing, when you use a call to action, it's much more effective. And as she says here, the guys from Momentous Media say that it will increase response by 216%. And she's done exactly what she says she's going to do. And she asks people to like. She gets. 144 people liking it, as well as 35 comments. Now, this is the Social Media Examiner page. Um, if any of you have checked out their blog, it is an amazing resource for all social media questions, queries, and they have some fantastic uh, guest bloggers on there. And as you can see here, at the top, underneath where it says wall, it allows people to post and add links. And as you can see the top one there, you've got somebody who's asking for help for uh, one of their questions. I mean, this means that instead of just being a resource for really useful information, people can actually get answers to their social media questions. So it also becomes a really good place to connect. And what happens is that other fans participate and they help each other with problems. And that really helps to build a sense of community. And they also they build this further by having a fan of the week. They have identified one of their super fans and shone a spotlight on them. It shows the value that they place on those who um, help them out and keep returning to that page. And also, if you look at the end of that first update, you see it's signed off by someone called Andrea. This is great because what it does, it gives you a really distinct personal feel to the interaction. Uh, Social Media Examiner is a team of the Facebook page is a team of three. You have Andrea Val, who um, wrote Facebook for Dummies, Cindy King, who's a well-known author, and Mike Stelzner, who is actually the founder of Social Media Examiner. I mean, uh, and then finally, I would say, how can you tell if your fans are actually engaged? Now, if you can see under that picture, there are 972 impressions for that post and a feedback percentage of 1.03. Now, 1.03 looks really, really small. Um, however, those chap clever chaps at HubSpot say that your target for uh, feedback percentage should be about 0.5%. So if you're getting above this, you are doing well. And the impressions, 972 impressions, that is the time the, the post is rendered on Facebook. It doesn't necessarily show how many people have actually seen it. So for example, the Plums Lingerie page has over 500 fans. So that would infer that people had, every fan of that had seen it twice, but that's really unlikely. Now, what I would say is when you first start and launch your page, it can be a real struggle to build your base. Um, and getting that engagement is really hard work. But if you provide an environment that has interesting content and encourages engagement, it will build. But it does, it does take time. 
And the tipping point of where you really see the growth shooting off is between 500 and 1,000 fans. Now, if you have a small local business, that's, that's hard work, I'll be <laughs> honest. And it can be time consuming. And there are other methods that you can use. Um, you can look at doing competitions. You can cross sell your Facebook page on other media. Add it to the bottom of your emails. Make sure it's on your website. If you have a blog, link it there. Um, if you have any hard copy marketing materials, make sure your Facebook URL is on there as well. So a little short webinar on Facebook engagement today. Hopefully you found some useful tips and tricks in this. Um, thank you all for coming. And I'm going to stop sharing the screen now. And if you have any questions, you can ask them in the little chat bar. Oh, yes. Uh, Jason asked, and it's a really good question. Um, recently, I don't know how, some few of you from Jersey, few of you aren't. Um, recently, a hotel in Jersey um, had a bit of a kerfuffle on their Facebook page because they, the story is that they were, hold, uh, they were hosting um, a whaling conference. And when a member of the anti-whaling committee booked into the hotel, despite the fact that they had approved his um, accommodation and confirmed it, um, they actually turned him away. Now, what this did was um, the anti-whaling community sort of went a bit um, mental on the their Facebook <laughs> page and were there was abuse, there was, this is an outrageous way to treat people, so on and so forth. Now, realistically, um, Hotel de France made a mistake. Um, and I think the best way of handling that is to have been honest and straightforward and dealt with it. Um, often by not responding and by ignoring things, it can actually make it worse. Um, they've now taken down their Facebook page. But I would always recommend that every person who does social media has a crisis management plan in place. And it appears that they didn't. What are the key elements to consider in a crisis management, crisis management plan from Charles? Realistically, you need to actually have some processes in place. Um, if it's Facebook page, there are levels of how you can deal with. So for example, if it's someone just being a bit snarky, 
you know, your community manager, you deal with it, um, and actually put in levels of where you escalate it up to the top brass. You know, something, the behavior that happened on the Hotel de France page, that's going to get escalated quite quickly. The unfortunate thing with things like that is you get a blogger who's into social media, they find it, they, they blog about it, and then it spreads further. Um, so actually thinking out the scenarios of what could happen and how you deal with it is, is all you really need to do. I've got Giles on it. Yes, Giles. Um, I there will be a recording of the session, which will be emailed out as well. So, if you didn't catch all of it, then you'll be able to catch up another time. How important will face this is from Jason again? How important will Facebook be going forward in comparison to Google Plus? Um, it's really early days for Google+. Plus. However, they have about 20, they, say the figures are, they think there's about 20 million people on it already. They're anticipating there will be 100 million people on it by Christmas. So it is, it is a chunk, it's looking like it's going to grow very fast. However, it's important to, not to forget that Facebook has over 700 million people on it. And they're not going to disappear overnight. Um, if you go around and speak to your friends and say you on Google Plus yet, yeah, I can pretty much guarantee most of them won't be. Um, it's it's making its ground with early adopters. Um, so, and it doesn't have a business option. I would say if you have a presence on Facebook, I would continue to make the most of it. Um, and keep an eye out on what Google Plus is doing. They're currently advertising for beta um, testers for their new business pages. So it's going to be really interesting to see, one, what their business pages look like, and also how it's going to impact search engine optimization. So, um, got a question from George. Uh, working for a law firm, I find it difficult on Facebook not just to broadcast as often new legislation changes are not of interest. Any thoughts, small tips on how I can gauge better as to slow big? Um, it's, it depends who your target audience is. Uh, if you're a law firm that deals with family law, uh, personal property, it's, you need to identify what interests those, I uh, see, and you, it's going to be, are you, so George, is it, is it sort of international as well as local, because if it is, that's where you, it's tricky, because you've got a split audience. No, I guess not. Um, I would say if legislative changes aren't of interest to anyone on your Facebook page, why would you post them? Um, so, I would say to build engagement, or for a law firm, you need to look at actually areas around the interest. So instead of um, just posting about wills um, and property, broaden it out. So when you're posting about property, you don't want to just talk about the legal aspect, but if you talk about, you know, um, top tips for moving house. Um, gosh, uh, wills, things about funeral advice. You know, broaden your topic out so it's not just about the legal aspects of it, but it's more about the lifestyle aspects. Yeah, make it more real. Um, what One idea is actually to do, and this is what I do for blogging, but it, you can use it for Facebook as well, is put together some profiles of the sort of people you imagine who are going to be fans of your page. 
So, for example, if you've got a fam, if you're trying to target women in their thirties, you know, stop. You can stop posting the odd thing about um, their fur. You know, if it's somebody who's buying their first home. Tips on that. Uh, how to choose? You know, which law firm to use and what it means. Um, also, you know, demystify what you do. You know, break down those barriers um, so people find you a lot more approachable. Because I know there's a company called Likeable Media. I'll send you the link to it. And they're a big believer that if you are likeable, people will want to do business with you. And so if you can be an approachable, open, likeable law firm, you'll find people have, uh, will be more eager to engage with you. Less jargon, a lot less jargon, a lot less of those fancy legal terms. So, right, I'm getting cheeky comments now. So, <laughs> has anyone else got some questions? <laughs> Okay, I'm going to wind up now. Thank you all very much for coming. Um, it was quite a short one this week because I spoke too fast as usual. Um, there will be uh, another one next month. I haven't decided the topic yet. You never know, it might be Google Plus. So, I'm going to sign off. Thank you very much, Apps.